Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Hands on SAP Dev with me, DJ Q Macro. It's Friday morning, 21st of February, uh, not 19, 19, 1999, uh, 2020. What's going on? What's going on already? Already. Um, we're here again with episode 54 of Hands on SAP Dev. We've got a new camera, um, and uh, I've got a microphone in that camera. Long story about the microphone, I'll tell you about that later, maybe. Um, so I hope it's okay. I hope you can see me and hear me fine. Um, the camera should be a, a higher quality. It's also sort of maybe wider as well. It's the Logitech C920, which gives me a 1080p uh, video, which is quite good. And it's got a little microphone on either side. My, uh, I'm pointing over there because that's where the uh, Blue Yeti microphone, external microphone uh, on its arm was. But basically, it failed. Uh, the mic, the mini USB connector has become loose. Um, and I tried to fix it yesterday, took it all apart, but failed. Um, so, yeah, not very happy with that. So, but I've got this uh, as an emergency measure. Ordered it from Amazon on Wednesday. Came yesterday. Really good. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Thanks for uh, confirming. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, in the sort of minimalism sense, uh, spirit. Uh, this is working well and I quite like it. So I might stick with this if it works well. So uh, yeah, so welcome. So who who, who have we got? Helmut, good morning. Good morning to Germany, Robert Dino. Good morning, Andrew. Good evening. Um, and uh, now uh, let me know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Jorge, uh, good morning. I uh, hope you got the stickers okay. I think you did, didn't you? Fantastic. Um, you can already, yeah, Helmut, you can already, already uh, hear me drinking my coffee. Now, that's because um, <clears throat> with the uh, Blue Yeti, I had a physical sort of mute button on it, and I muted it while I was waiting in the sort of standby, and then I turned it on when I was ready. But I didn't want to fiddle around with the light stream settings to sort of turn the, uh, uh, turn the audio off, and then turn it on again, send it to live just in case it didn't work. Um, so you could hear, wow, I was trying to drink it really, really quietly. And I was, I think, oh, I need to clear my throat, <clears throat> but I couldn't, I didn't want to do it because I knew I was on, uh, live. Um, so there we go. Uh, so Polka, Morgan, Pierre, bonjour, uh, Andrew, uh, oh, thank you, uh, Manuel, thank you uh, for joining as well. And good morning, Jorge. Uh, yes. Oh, thank you very much. That's good to know. Good to know. Great. So, um, yeah, it's a, it is a bit of a, a holiday, uh, holiday episode today because i'm on holiday today and we've got a long weekend michelle and i today and monday off but i thought i wanted to do one anyway uh, just to keep the, the regular schedule up um so there we go so where are we let me just switch to uh light stream and switch to the um uh main scene because there's a few things i want to share actually uh the first thing I want to share is a really fantastic announcement. Um, I know that uh, a lot of folks have been working on this in the background, so well done to them. Uh, the announcement of SAP InsideTrack Online. So normally it's SAP InsideTrack and then a location, but the location is Earth. The location is World. Uh, there's an InsideTrack Online uh, Twitter handle. Um, but basically, go here to find out. Let me just paste that in there. Where's my Where's my chat? What's going on? We go and um, have a look. This is um, this has been worked on by many people, including uh, Ronnie and Anne and Katan there and Nabhit and Srikanth, and of course uh, Jacob, who wrote this blog post. So yeah, really interesting uh, concept. I mean, it's it's uh, something that has been, I think, bubbling under the surface in many people's minds for a while. But so uh, total hats off to this this bunch of people for you know getting it off the ground and you know uh, getting the initiative to do it. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. So uh, there's a, I think there's a, a link to a form to submit your proposal. Um, it's a bit odd there, a bit of a white space uh, oddness there. But anyway, uh, submit your talk proposal. I'll be doing that uh, probably this weekend. Submit a proposal. So uh, do the same as well. It's a 24-hour event as well, so which is pretty cool because it covers the earth. There we go. So that's that. I've got a, I've got a piece of paper down here because um, of all sorts of things I want to uh, show and mention. 
Good morning, Sri Kant. Just mention your name actually um, on this um, on this awesome announcement about SAP Inside Track Online. Uh, so that's oh, I like the I like the world thing. That's really cool. Uh, the Earth. That's really cool. I didn't notice that until now. Really good. Okay, so that's that. Uh, what's the next? Oh yes, just just um, go down here. Yeah, I just noticed uh, from York um, there was uh, Inside Track uh, Brisbane talking of Inside Tracks. I just saw a tweet this morning, just after I came back from my uh, short run, and um, it looks like he gave uh, a session at Inside Track Brisbane. Uh, that was that was just a few days ago, wasn't it? Was that the, this weekend? Sounded like an awesome Inside Track. I think Andrew, you were there and you gave a session as well, right, Andrew? Shevos, uh, that was Ronnie's art. Well done, Ronnie. Uh, thank you, Srikanth. Um, uh, so yeah, and he's he's. Uh, Yoga's has just posted uh, a GitHub repo with all the bits and pieces that uh, he showed um, on his session. Uh, so really cool. So you know, it covers uh, fast arrow syntax and promise of weight and so on. Uh, yeah, so really cool. You know, I'm a big fan, of course, as you know, of uh, all things functional programming in JavaScript. So uh, you know, more power to Yorg on this. So have a look at that and see what you think. Um, what else is there? Uh, well, yesterday, uh, Max had a, uh, a live uh, stream, which is really cool. I'll just put a link to his YouTube there, YouTube channel. Um, he's got this playlist now of all his uh, adventures in uh, SAP Cloud Platform Cat Java on this one. Uh, so that was really cool yesterday. So go there and subscribe. And in fact, there's one thing that uh, I wanted to show you now uh, that was related to something that I mentioned or was thinking of uh, while I was uh, online, you know, with the rest of the folks watching, watching Max. Oh, you were at uh, SAP Inside Track Melbourne. Ah, sorry, Andrew. Sorry. Yes, uh, that was also awesome. Uh, I, I looked at that from afar. Hey, Gregors. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good day. Good day. Um, so, that, yeah, during that session, I saw Max um, trying to type in some um, JSON. Uh, because he was using curl to send some data in a post request, you know, in an OData uh, insert um, or create, sorry, uh, create operation to um, a cap based uh, OData service. And I was thinking, yeah, I, I get a lot of grief with my fingers when I'm trying to type JSON. JSON is very easy to read, but it's actually harder than you think to type because there's lots of, you know, you've got to make sure that all the tokens are in double quotes and so on. And, oh, do I put double quotes around the numeric values or not? And remember the commas and the colon and all that stuff. And I remember thinking, hmm, I've been, well, not drowning, drowning is quite negative. I've been drowning in sort of um, uh, YAML recently. I've been doing a lot of stuff with Ansible um in my quest to learn more about sort of automated devops and kubernetes and so on and um you know those ansible playbooks are yaml but of course more closer to home more closer closer to home um is of course um uh, cloud foundry and the multi-target application concept and of course the multi-target applications are defined in yaml so anyway i've been thinking yaml quite a lot and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, just minimise this. Uh, in fact, yeah, minimise this Twitter thing because it's sort of distracting me a little bit. Um, yeah, so um, I was thinking, ah, oh, yeah, wouldn't it be cool to be able to sort of, you know, on the command line, write uh, YAML instead of JSON when I was, you know, sending some data to curl, and I just played around with that, and it's quite cool. Um, but before we do that, in order to get a little service up to um, post against. Um, I was also messing around with, well, last week, and, and this will come up in a minute. Good morning, Peter. Uh, last week, we were messing around with uh, the NPM package repository uh, provided by GitHub, and I'll come to that shortly. I've been conversing with Andrew uh, in the background. Thank you, Andrew, for that. That's awesome. But also, NPM has a uh, registry for Docker containers, and that got me onto thinking about Docker again and containers. Anyway, um, I thought it'd be really useful for myself to have a wow! I just I suddenly want this bookshop uh, cap uh, Node.js bookshop 
ODATA service. I want to run it now. I don't want to sort of set up a new CDS in it. You know, I don't want to bang, uh, uh, set that up and, you know, run something. So I've created my first, uh, where are we? Uh, my first, um, or second actually, second entry on Docker. This is experimental. I'll probably remove this, but this is experimental. So I've created basically a Dockerized, containerized um, bookshop service. And it's the simple bookshop service that we use in the CAP uh, Node.js code jam for now. But I think, you know, between us, we can come to a consensus as to maybe what we want in a, you know, super quickly runnable uh, container. So let me just show you, and then I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that now, and then I can use that for my demonstration of this uh, YAML thing. So let me just bring that up here. Um, episode 54. So Docker um, uh, image list. So I've only got a, a few things. I've been using this dry, this, this sort of Docker TUI, terminal user interface. And I've got the SAP Cloud Connector, actually, as well, um, Docker. Uh, Yes, I've got the strange noise outside. Uh, the cloud connector running in a Docker container, and that's thanks originally to Nabi Zamani. And I use that on the workflow code jam. So I will now uh, Docker run because this, this is the beautiful thing. You know, I don't have anything. I'll just say Docker run. I want to remove what it's finished. I want to run it in the background as well. Um, in fact, before we do that, let's start. What have I got listening on this machine at the moment? Um, I've got basically uh, SSH and I've got the uh, cloud connector and that's, I don't know what that is, but anyway, that's not anything to do with us. Just to show you that we've got nothing up our sleeve or anything, Docker run, remove after uh, detach and also um, expose the port on the 4004, 4004. Q macro, what's it called? Q macro book shop Docker, and I've tagged it um, with one, because why not? Uh, so let me just see what happens. Okay, so I've deliberately not sort of got it locally. And it's built upon, um, in fact, if I just go into here, uh, CD local pro projects um, work. Is it in there? I can't remember. Um, Bookshop Docker, yes. Uh, it's based upon Node 12, uh, the Node 12 uh, base image. And that's all it is, right? Um, and in fact, just out of interest, I've pushed that as well to uh, qmacro uh, git.com, qmacro, what's it called again? Bookshop Docker. There. Um, so you can see that. In there, bong, uh, there's the Docker file that we just looked at. So have a have a look at that uh, and see. So anyway, that's that. Let me just bring that down again. Oh, question. Good morning, Phil. Uh, good evening as well to you. And Amit, good morning, good afternoon. Are you thinking to provide also an ARM image? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I'm still a beginner on Docker. I'm still a beginner on everything. Um, but yeah, I think that's uh, that's really nice. It, it, um, I would. Once we get, what I'm also wanting to do, Gregor, is reduce the size of this particular image because it's quite large. But I'm again, like I've said, I'm still a beginner in Docker. But I want to base it probably on uh, Node Alpine rather than what it is right now, which is Node 12, which is uh, I think it's a Debian-based or an Ubuntu-based system, which is quite large. Uh, so we'll get it really as small as possible, and then start compiling it also for uh, these different architectures. Yeah. Um, it's a yes, it's a default cap installation inside the container. So have a look at the uh, GitHub repo. It's just an idea, right? Um, uh, I, I, but I think it's for you know for me it really appeals. As in, oh right, bang! I just want to demonstrate something with OData with cap, bang! Okay, I've got something running. Right, let's go. Rather than mess around with starting something out. So have a look at that and see what you think. Anyway, um, that's that. So let's go back here. Now it's downloaded, it's pulled, uh, and it's running. Okay, so if I, in fact, if Docker PS, you can see now QMacro Bookshop Docker. Uh, so there we go. In fact, rather than um, uh, let's just go there, localhost 4004. There we go. It's being served. There's the authors and the books, 
uh, there's no there's no um, orders uh, entity exposed yet. Um, I just want to do the basic thing, but you know, once we once we between ourselves decide what we want to do as a really basic thing, maybe just all authors, books, and orders. Um, then um, you know we'll we'll sort of reconfigure that and build it again. Exactly, Julian, uh, that's, that's fantastic uh, suggestion. In fact, it's what I just mentioned as well. Um, Node Alpine is something I suddenly learned about this week, um, and it, yeah, you're right, it is, it is much smaller. And uh, thank you for that. Uh, I'm by no means a, you know a Docker container expert here, uh, so all the help uh, I can get, I'm grateful for. Uh, definitely. So yeah, that's that's something. Anyway, I've got this now. I've got this Docker container running that's running the um, uh, running the uh, cap bookshop. So what I wanted to show you was if I say, for example, um, well, let's let's see uh, what books we've got. Uh, curl. Uh, local host four thousand four catalog books um let's just paste it into jq just we'll do, i'm doing it here so we can just stay with the terminal right uh, so we've got those books there we got um uh three books from uh, dr Adams, of course there um yes so yeah exactly uh, gregor so that's a really good point and uh, in fact um we can uh, we can dig into that a little bit more i know that also marius uh, was looking at that sort of approach for the MTA modules as well, leaving out the node module. So when you build it, uh, when you run it, anyway, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so whatever whatever works is a good thing. Um, yes, we could we could install and run them at start time. Um, I don't know how to do that yet, but you know that's definitely this is these are, these are really good ideas. So we got three books: four two one, four two two, and four two seven from Douglas Adams. Um, so let's add another book. Uh, so if we uh, so add another book, we'd say curl um, minus D, and then uh, you know this there hit now starts the, the hard bit, right? So um, book uh, ID in quotes uh, for thirty, for example, and then uh, title. Oh no, hot seat. Title. I'm not doing this on purpose either. Title. Is it title? Title. Um, so long and thanks. For all the fish, uh, that's it. So, okay, this is you know a bit of a silly example because it's quite easy to type just two properties with two values for those properties. But you know, once it gets a little bit more complex with more properties, then you get into you know a few sort of typing difficulties. But let's just post this one anyway. Um, by default, I think curl will send the post method when you send data, but we need to also say applicate. Uh, Content type application JSON, and we'll send it to local host 4004 catalog. We'll send it to the books entity set. There we go. So now, if we have a look at the books, we got it there. So long on facts or fish. Um, I forgot to put the stock and I forgot the author, but it doesn't matter. Um, so we instead, instead of doing that, there's also, um, and as you know, there's also this JQ command. Just like JQ, there's also YQ, uh, which will sort of parse YAML and pretty print it, but it can also convert YAML into JSON. So if we, for example, um, where are we? Um, episode 54. If we say, um, uh, where are we? Uh, list local projects, workflow. Um, I've got some workflow stuff to show you uh, next time as well. Uh, workflow tile MCA. Yeah, oh, there we go. There. So if I say y, uh, yq yaml q to JSON uh, read, there we go. We've converted that MTA that's in there to JSON. Really nice. And there is a very very similar sort of structure uh, once you start staring at it long enough. So we can say now uh, we can use that power to say. Um, Instead of this here, uh, uh, let's just get rid of all that stuff. In fact, let's get rid of the whole of that thing. We can say, um, ba, 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 ba. what do we want to do? We want to, oh, yes, we will, um, I think, use a command substitution, uh, yq minus j read there. I think that's what we want to do. And then we can start 
typing, because we've said basically read from standard in with that final dash there, we can say um, ID um, 440, title another book by Douglas Noel Adams, stock uh, 42, control D. Ah, okay. Ooh. Um, ba, 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 ba. Ah, maybe we need to do that one second. D at. Um, what was it again? Uh, title, book, title, uh, ID. Let's just do that for now, 440. Ah, what was it? Ah, tracked. Um, oh, there we go. Um, it's almost right. But anyway, okay, I'm not going to go into many details. I don't want to waste too much time on this because I want to get into the real real meat. Um, uh, so, yeah, okay. Um, I'm annoyed. I can't remember what, what I did there. I did a little uh, screencast of it somewhere. But anyway, that's that. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Oh, yes. So, uh, in order to um, uh, continue, there's one more thing I want to do, which is to show. Hey, Christian, I laugh. Allow is it uh, is it um, carnival over there already? Oh my goodness! Um, Docker image. Okay, there's some good conversation about Docker image there. That's fantastic. Um, uh, I'm having a Docker image that CDS installed global, and I have a separate image for the app itself. Ooh. Oh, a base image. Yes. So Gregor, I think are you talking about having a base image, which is cap but with no application, and then when you wanted to do an application, you'd say from cap base image. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I think that's what you mean, isn't it? Um, yeah, a base image would be really cool. Hey, Max, hola. Um, yeah, so I was just showing, uh, failing to show, what was it? Um, three, grep, um, YQ, D, oh, there we go. Um, YQ read, why did that work then? That's what it did, isn't it? Application JSON, uh, catalog books, D, oh, hold on, D there, that's it. Uh, command substitution, YQ, oh, ah, ah, I'll read, there we go. Uh, book uh, ID 77, title, there we go, okay, I don't know what I did wrong there. Uh, yes, I did. I, I did, I put R instead of read. Okay, so what we're doing there is command substitution, okay, um, saying this, the result of running the following thing pass into uh, as a value into the D uh, switch. Uh, so read from standard in, uh, read this YAML and convert it to JSON. Bang. And so we can start typing all these sort of, you know, YAML based things. And of course, you can have structure as well, introduced with the dash in YAML and, you know, uh, arrays and things. Uh, really nice. Uh, okay, Gregor, that's, that's okay. That sounds like a nice idea. Yeah, definitely. I do think there is a, there is a, um, uh, a demand at least here for uh, you know the quick bookshop thing because it's really useful to demonstrate things on the fly. Okay, so talking of demonstrating things, one more thing before we uh, just start having a look at the uh, God. There's so much stuff to show. Um, I hope this is okay. Uh, so much stuff to show. So um, yeah. oh yes. So Andrew and I uh, were sort of following on from last week's episode, and I'd created. Let me go back up here. I'd created um, th this. Um, where are we? Uh, hands on SAP Dev, hands on, what are it called? So, Q Macro H O S D. We created this repo yesterday, uh, last week together, and we published that as a package. Okay. It just, this is this, um, the thing that uh, shows the, uh, the hands on SAP Dev episodes. This particular thing is like the, the static uh, JavaScript object version of the API, let's call it. And we published uh, a package. Okay. Um, for anybody to consume. It turns out, and I've been digging into this, and Andrew helped me a lot here, that even to consume a package, uh, a public package in a public uh, repo on the GitHub package registry, you need to be authenticated. So this is what you need to do. Basically, there's the HOSD thing, and it tells us here, for example, we can say npm install qmacro hsd, for example, right? So let's just do that really quickly. And in fact, what I wanted to do, in fact, yeah, there we go. What I wanted to do was to go to somewhere where I hadn't installed it. And, you know, what better what better place than the uh, Google Cloud Shell? Always useful for a, uh, a nice little uh, environment. I've got NPM installed already, uh, which is cool. And I've also, um, I think I've used NPM here before. So there we go. I've got NPM RC. I've been used SA. I've used CAT before. Um, so that's fine. Um, 
So what we'll do is we'll go into uh, oh, uh, npm. Sorry, um, let's do the same same directory. So uh, uh, make the uh, consume consumer cd consumer ooh, consumer and um, bah, 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 npm init minus y. So we'll initialize a, a repo, and then we'll say, for example, npm uh, install at qmacro hosd. Okay, that's what we're told to use. We can put the, uh, the, the version in the tag, but we don't need to. Um, but first of all, it'll say, well, you know, I haven't got that in the uh, npm registry, but it's the wrong registry, as you can see. So we can say npm uh, set uh, config uh, set Q macro registry to be uh, npm dot package registry dot github dot com. Okay, then I can try that again. But now, and this is what um, Andrew was, uh, you know, helping me out testing last week or Saturday or Sunday, whatever it was. Um, you need to authenticate, and it's like, why? Why do you need to authenticate? Is that something I've done wrong, or uh, you know, whatever? But no, it's a thing. Uh, currently with GitHub right now, you need to authenticate even with public repo. So uh, npm login um, registry equals npm dot package dot package github dot com. Is that how you do it? Q macro, and then what we need to do is to go to GitHub. GitHub uh, tokens and generate a token. I'll, I'll generate a token right now uh, and delete it again straight after. Um, all we want to do is that we want the repo. You need the repo scope. You need all the, the, the children of the repo scope and the read packages thing. Um, what do we say here? Uh, repo, sorry, package consume. Um, and I'll just move that down there a second so I can just generate that token without you seeing it. Generate token. Uh, Copy that, okay, and refresh. And as you can see now, I've got it there, package consume. So now I've got it in my buffer, hopefully still. Now I can say password, uh, paste. No, nope, that one. Okay, I'm now logged in, and that will give me um, that entry in the NPMRC that we saw last week as well. So hopefully now that should allow us to install it. There we go. And so we can actually use it now. No consume it. Uh, X equals require uh, Q macro HOSD. And there we go. So that's cool. So that's what you need to do if you want to sort of you know consume a package that you've actually published on uh, the GitHub NPM repo. Oh my goodness. Right. So um, let's move on. It's 828. I wanted to get to uh, the you know the main topic of today before the half hour's up. Um, I hope we're not going too fast here. Um, there's a lot to cover. I'm just looking at my list here. Um, oh, there was another thing as well, but I'll, I think maybe I'll leave that to another time. It was basically um, how I have adjusted my little watch command to watch the. I'll show you here, actually. Um, uh, no, I won't show you because it's got. I'm going to get into it again. I know. I know. What I'm like. I get digressed. I get digressed. Um, uh, you would rather make YAML not even more prominent. Well, yes. But I mean, it's the. I think you've got to. You've got to sort of. Um, what's the phrase? Take the bull by the horns. You've got to embrace it because, you know, YAML is ugly, uh, but in a different way to how JSON is ugly. And I think we've got to deal with them both as developers in this space. Um, um, I, 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 Julian, that's a good question. I am happy with the GitHub packages. I'm happy with the concept. I'm happy that they're doing it. Um, I'm slightly not understanding why they're making it a requirement to authenticate if you want to consume somebody's published, public published package. You know, I don't quite understand that. Uh, and I, I, I hope that that is not something that will sort of kill this whole idea, but I do love the idea of multiple package registries. Okay, so um, that's that. So where were we last week? Um, last week, we had this, um, Get rid of that now. Delete. Yeah, uh, we had this project, hands-on SAP Dev, and am I still running that to contain Docker PS? It's still running. So let's say Docker uh, stop uh, 063, and it should disappear because I did the minus minus RM, shouldn't it? Uh, 
Uh, removal in progress, there we go. Oh, that's quite cool, removal in progress. That's a good status. I'm only getting rid of that so I can run another thing on 4004. I could run it on a separate port, of course, but you know it'll just be confusing to me. So if I go into, where are we here? We go into here and say npm, uh, npm start. Um, what have we got? What have we got? We've got um, local, there we go. There's local host and that should change now. There we go. There's, <laughs> how weird is that? Uh, we've got now our episodes and, ooh, ah, oh, no, I didn't, I don't think I've actually um, configured it. I've just copied that over actually. Uh, Hands-on SAP dev, blah, 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 episodes. Um, what have we got here? Uh, let's just start again. Um, CDS deploy. Actually, let's have a look what we've got. Uh, services. Oh, episodes. Yes, that's it. Episodes and episodes in there. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so we had a single a single entity. Uh, really, really simple. And the topics. Uh, it's just a stream. You know, a comma separated list of words in a single thing, and that's what they look like there. I, I created that. That's right. I created that from that. Um, uh, uh, spreadsheet on Google Docs. I almost said Excel spreadsheet. What is going on with me? Um, so let's say CDS deploy to uh, SQL uh, data.db and uh, npm start. And now let's bring that up again. There we go. Okay, that's it. Right. I haven't set it up properly. So right now, and this is something that, you know, I, I don't really know where I'm going with this particular part of it. And I definitely want your um, your input here, your thoughts, um, because I think it's I think it's important. Um, and I'll tell you why I think it's important shortly. Uh, I mean, of course, it's always important to get your thoughts. I mean, I think it's important uh, to think more deeply about O data and the way we do things. Um, so we've got like here a, a list of episodes. Episode zero, episode one, episode two. We've got the episode title just for now. We haven't got anything else apart from topics, comma separated things. So we could say, and I think we did this last week, right? Um, uh, dollar filter equal um, equals contains um, topics uh, no JS. Let's do that. Oh, is it? Um, is it the other way around? I can't remember. Uh, node JS topics. I can't remember how to do it. Hold on a second. O data filter contains. Oh, there we go. Filter equals contains. Who oh, was right? Categories. That was right, isn't it? If that's right, if that works. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, what am I doing wrong there? Filter episodes. Let's just check again. What am I doing wrong, folks? Uh, well, one thing I'm doing wrong is I'm going too fast. Uh, dollar filter equals contains topics um, node.js. What did I do before? What was that before then? Maybe I didn't do the dollar uh, episode. Dollar filter contains topics. Surely it wasn't that space there. Surely not. Wow, okay. So there's no spaces allowed. My goodness me, that's very strict, isn't it? Okay. Um, and I quite like that, you know. Um, so let's say we wanted to say, well, show me, you know, filter down. I want to find the episodes where we talked about Node.js and uh, debugging, for example. So we could then add another one and, um, and contains topics debugging. Okay, so that's quite nice, right? Thank you, Shrikanth. Yes, it's a space. Who knew? Uh, well, well, I did probably, and uh, you know, again, um, I'm thinking too fast or thinking too slow to realize. Thank you, Shrikanth. You're on it. I know that, of course, these from experience yesterday. These these messages from you come to me after I've realized what it is. But I do appreciate you got it obviously before me. Um, so that's. I think that's quite a nice way of managing uh, the topics, because it's just easy. You just type them in into a single stream, right? Um, but there's another part of me that, you know, with not that I have such a hat, but with my um, 
database normalized hat on, you know, one of those caps with normalized on the front. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't, oh, there's Riley Rainey. Hello, Riley. Welcome, Riley. Uh, um, uh, it, it, this doesn't feel quite right. So what I want to do is just start looking into how we might separate out the topics from the uh, episodes as two separate entities. So topics is a first class citizen, uh, you know, as it, as it were, um, in our model. So let's explore that and see what we have to do. Right. This is this is what I wanted to look at here. So let's just go in here um, and start editing. Um, we've got our CSV here, so we'll have to change that a little bit. So ideally, um, what we want is uh, another entity, first of all, um, topics. And that topic, we don't really need an ID for that or you know a numeric ID. I think we just have the topic name, right? So key name, it's gonna be a string, right? That's effectively it, right? So we've got the um, episodes as a separate thing, and we've got the, the topics as a separate thing, a separate entity. Um, no space is allowed. <laughs> really, that's, that's, a, that's a, such a good idea, Robert. No space is allowed is a good text for your next T-shirt print. Yes, in fact, I've got one queued up before that, which is that one from the creator of the uh, corn shell, David Corn. Uh, which is go away or I will replace you with a very small shell script or something like that. Um, and make them localized. Yes. What, localized T-shirts, Polka? Localized. Um, I did have another idea of it with Meta as well. I quite like Meta. Anyway, Robert, yes, too many T-shirts. Uh, I've, got, I've got too many T-shirts already. Um, so, oh, wait, the string is localized. Yes, make them localized. Exactly. Um, let's do that as a separate step. But yeah, um, let's just concentrate on, I, wanna, I can only concentrate on one thing. Now, it turns out, as we saw last week, uh, that um, A, CAP supports, supports managed associations. B, we as developers should ideally be using managed associations rather than trying to build those associations ourselves using boring keys manually in a very sort of... Um, uh, imperative way, uh, sort of imperative, um, because we want to work at a level of abstraction uh, so that, you know, if we start messing around with foreign keys and specifying those directly, it becomes very brittle. And also, you know, it sort of becomes a little bit more tied to a relational database backend rather than, you know, a general persistence layer. So it's a good thing. I think we're all agreed it's a good thing we use uh, managed associations. However, uh, in that documentation, which we saw last week, uh, CAP and CDS specifically in CAP doesn't support many to many. It supports one to many, which we've seen between books and authors in the previous example. Um, but oh, make the topics. Oh, interesting. I never thought of the topic names being localized. Uh, interesting. I thought them as being more tokens. Oh, very interesting. So that's, you know, a philosophical interesting rather than a technical interesting. But yes. Um, hmm. Anyway, yes, uh, that's, another, that's another conversation. Hello, Ronnie, good morning, and congratulations on the announcement of the SAP Insight Track online, which we talked about earlier today. Fantastic. So it doesn't support many-to-many. -many. It supports one-to-many, but many-to-many, -many, uh, what you have to do is build one of these sort of... Um, Conjunction tables. Now, there's a couple of blog posts on answers.icp.com, blog posts, a couple of questions and answers on uh, answers.icp.com that talk about this, but I think we'll just build it ourselves. So it's quite straightforward. And mentally, the way I could, uh, can understand this the best is if I put the conjunction table in between, uh, or this conjunction entity, in between the two entities I, I want to join together as it were, in the actual CDS file, in the schema. So I'll say entity, um, and the convention, I think, the, or the de facto, the convention is you just squish together the, the, the two entity names, and that's what this conjunction entity is. So episodes, topics. So there's our sort of structure, and the um, 
episode's topics has two keys. Basically, that's all it is. It's just like a you know a pointer, a double pointer. So key. Um, what do we want to do? We want to point to the episodes first of all. Key episode, and that's an association to episodes. By the way, um, you can see that I've only got partial. Uh, Vim CDS LSP support because I've broken it. Um, but anyway, I'll be back soon. And we also want, of course, another key um, topic. Oops. So topics. Okay. So we've got this sort of conjunction table, which will allow us to associate on a pair by pair, by pair basis an episode with a topic. So episode zero is I'm looking down here for you know, on the other screen. Episode four has got topic Node.js. Episode four has got REPL. Episode four has got topic debugging. Episode four has got so we have you know multiple records in that episode's topic entity. But on the other hand, the topics property of the episodes entity becomes an association and thereby becomes a you node know, data and navigation property. So we want to say there association. Two, but in this case, it's a many a one to many association. Okay, so we got a many a one to one association going upwards from the conjunction table, and we got a, 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 a one to many going that way. So associated to many episodes topics on, and this is I, I don't know about you, but I always have to sort of think a little bit about this. It's on let me use my mouse here on that thing relating to that thing. Okay. So on topics dot episode equals self, okay, which makes sense, right? Because it's basically uh, that episode here has to be this episode here, and in the same way, we'll say episodes too many episodes topics on on episodes dot topic equals self okay so that theoretically is the many-to-many -many relationship uh, that we've built using this so-called conjunction table uh, there's a reference to this sort of thing in the standard cap documentation and like I say, there's also a post or one or two posts, uh, questions and answer posts on the answers.icb.com thing as well. So have a look at that. Um, now, what does that mean? That also means, of course, that we've got to um, uh, change this. Let's go back out of here. Let's go into the um, service, and we've got to expose those things as well. So um, topics, topics, and also... Let's put it in the middle as well. Episodes, topics, oops. There, okay. So we're now, we're now exposing all three things. Now, um, if we don't expose all three, weird things happen. Or maybe, actually, we'll leave that out for now. And we'll see what happens. I mean, it's obvious when you think about it what happens, but it's quite, you know, I quite like sort of stumbling over things and thinking, oh, of course, yeah, it's not something I've thought about before, but yeah, duh, obvious. So that's that. But why, what we need to do now is go into our not there uh, into our CSV folder, and we need basically to. I'm not going to do this. Uh, what time is it? Eight forty-three. Uh, we need basically to split this stuff out. So uh, let's create this new episodes file here, and let's go into it and say for, we'll just have three for now. Um, let's get rid of those. And the episodes, um, where you have basically a um, an entity that has uh, has the an association, but it's a, a one to many association. You don't need that stuff. Okay, so literally, it's just um, that's all we need. Okay, so let's go to there, uh, go to there, and also go to there. That's all we need for our episodes, right? Because all we've got is a title. And the navigation property, of course, we don't put in here. Um, we put the reference to that stuff in the table that is the receiving end of the, the many, if that makes sense. Am I making sense? Um, so that's that. Let's also, 
um, write to uh, write to QMacro topics CSV. Oh, I'll not save that one. Have I um, save that one? Go down to topics ID ID and topic name. Uh, oh no, it's just topic name, isn't it? Topic uh, Node.js. Um, I don't know debugging. Doesn't really matter, does it? Debugging. Uh, cap CDS that'll do for now on it, right? Uh, I'm just making this up. And finally, we'll have a um, Q Macro episodes topics CSV where we join these things together. So, what's our thing? We want. Um, uh, let's bring that in one second. Um, uh, let's just have a quick look here. Um, into here, DB, we've got schema. Oh, right, of course, episode and topic, right? Yeah, okay, let's go here, zoom that in. Um, episode topic, episode zero is has got a topic of you know, um, Node.js. Episode zero, let's go up here in a minute. What's that for the other topics? Episode zero has got a topic of cap. And episode zero has got a topic of CDS, and episode one has got debugging, and it's also got Node.js, and then two it's just got um, bananas. Okay, I think that's what we want to do, right? Am I doing this right? Um, oh, Christian, uh, in general, would it not be better to have a managed key in the uh, end to end mapping entities using the two foreign keys? Yes, possibly. Yeah, this is not the definitely. This is not the the end of the road on this discovery thing. I also want to sort of discover, uh, not discover, explore the use of, you know, a property that has enums, right? You know, uh, philosophically, theoretically, these topics are potential values of a an enumeration. Okay, and I've been looking into OData as well, uh, OData four and four hundred one actually. Oh, so much so little time um, because that's got some really cool support for enumeration-based queries with the has um, uh, query operator. So after that, another time. Um, so yeah, that's just, that, I'm definitely, I think it might be worth exploring that on another thing as well. If that's something we want to explore, as in if, if you're okay exploring this in more detail, which I hope you are generally, then let's do that because I think this is super interesting. I mean, you know, we, we, don't, we don't get very far with anything we build, but I think, uh, at least, you know, from my perspective, I like to go a little bit deep and understand things properly uh, and explore different ideas uh, rather than like build a massive thing. I hope that's okay with you as well. Uh, if not, tell me, of course. Um, so there we go. That's that. Let's just write all that. Um, and I think, yeah, let's go out of there and. Um, That's fine, yeah, that's okay. Where are we? Um, cool, okay, so let's see, uh, CDS deploy, let's get rid of everything, make sure everything's clean, deploy to SQLite uh, data.db. Uh, oh, episode, no, episode tell me has no column name, episode, what? BID, uh, is it called schema? Episode topics, no column named episode. Yes, it has. What am I doing wrong here? Um, name and episodes, topics, episodes, topics. I think that's right. What was the error? So episodes, fine. Q macro topics, secret tape Q macro episodes, topics has no column named episode. CDS compile to SQL DB. Uh, ah, oh, of course, of course, of course. Um, episodes, it's um, it's the episode underscore ID. These are the sort of generated foreign keys for us, okay, which we have to sort of have a look at. We have to sort of delve beneath the abstract covers if we want to supply the CSV data, and, you know, supply it with the, the actual working um, uh, field names. So there, you know, we always get these questions about, well, we have this question in our cap Node.js code gem, don't we, Max, if you're still there, Max? Um, 
about you know why would you ever use the compile um, commander CES? There's there's a perfect example. Like, you know what are we generating here? Um, so that was completely unscripted as well. Not that anything is scripted anyway, as you can probably tell because it's completely random. Um, so it's episode ID and topic name. So if we now um, uh, yeah, um, episode topics go into there, episode ID and topic name. There we go. And now let's see what happens. Right. Okay. That's good. So now, stare at, start. Let's see what we get. Um, let's bring that back up here. Let's go. Let's go to the start. You know, let's go right to the start. We got episodes. And we got topics. Now, this room. Yeah. So this reminds me. We've, we've deliberately left out the exposure of the episodes topics. Um, uh, let's um, let's go in here. Yeah. Let's go into here. We've deliberately left out the um, exposure of the episodes topics entity in the service. What that means from an OData perspective is that we get a really simple, over simple, too simple metadata or, or yeah, entity data model, right? I'm gonna call it with entity, you know, I'm becoming more aware now uh, ah, yes, Gregor, you use the SQL Lite plugin of VS Code to look up this name. Yes, exactly. I mean, VS Code is fantastic. Um, I sort of, you know, I do like VS Code a lot, but I also like, you know, the stuff that I use. So I use that. Uh, but I would also encourage you to uh, look at VS Code, but also, you know, embrace the embrace the terminal, embrace the command line, oh, it's a feature, etc. right? All that. But the interesting thing about this, right, to get back to this, is that we get, let's just close this entity container for a second, we get two entities. We get the episodes entity and we get the topics entity, which of course is you know understandable. But all we get, oh sorry, all we get in there are the ID and the title. And we get the name, and that's it. So we get everything. Sorry, the only thing we get are the things that are not navigation properties, because there's nowhere to navigate to, which is pretty, you know, it's pretty cool that it does that for us and doesn't like, you know, collapse in a heap. But logically, that's the only thing that can be served from an, from a, from an entity data model perspective because the episodes topics entity is not exposed. And that's the, the target of the two navigation properties, one in each of these entities. And if the target's not there, then the navigation properties don't make any sense. So that's what I wanted to show you. So now what we'll do is we'll, um, uh, Add that back in. And uh, let's go here again. And actually, I should do this, shouldn't I? CDS watch. There we go. Uh, and now, if we refresh, we get a much larger, much more voluminous. Uh, entity data model, which is cool because let's get rid of this entity container again. We get the episodes entity type with the ID and the title, and now we get the navigation property because it can successfully define a navigation to somewhere, which is of course a collection of episode topics, episodes topics things. So that's there. Okay, so that's cool. That's interesting, I think. Um, so now if we uh, refresh, of course, we get the episodes topics. Um, mm. Did I not deploy? Ah, of course. Ah, of course. What I forgot to do in my excitement is not deploy again, because of course we need to do the deploy to cause the episodes topics conjunction table to be defined. So let's do that again. Um, that'll do. Doesn't really matter. We can delete it again. Now. Where are we? There we go. Now, let's go back. We've still got that episode's topics. There we go. So we've now, of course, we're just you know looking manually at the, at the relationship. What does that give us? That also gives us, of course, the episodes. 
but that's really simple, right? There's no there's no relationship specific or there's no topic specified here. But the cool thing is that we can now follow the navigation property to say um, expand. Let's just go back to the metadata just to understand what we're about to do, right? We can say, show me the episodes and expand the topics navigation property. Actually, let's leave up there and bring up another tab. Look at the episodes and now say dollar expand equals topics, which is fine. Okay, we sort of understand that. If we can, we can go the other way as well, right? So we can say topics and we can now say expand equals episodes, which is nice, right? So what are the episodes that uh, exist in, uh, that have been tagged with Node.js? Well, the problem now is that we, um, we get that expand, but the expand is from the topics entity to the related entity episodes topics, which has just got two properties, episode and name. So the episode ID and the topic name. So we, with OData version four, we can do something like this. Expand equals episode. So we can expand the expand. So now we can say, okay, for Node.js, well, let's, let's just pick out Node.js for now. No, topics, um, Node.js, because that's the key, right? JS. So what are the episodes that talk about Node.js? What are the episodes that have been tagged with the topic Node.js? And there they are. We're going through this conjunction table to the final table, which is, of course, the episodes. So topics through episodes, topics to topics. And um, in terms of sort of normalization, I think, you know, you know, our data is more normalized in the persistence layer. In terms of usability, I think from a human perspective, you know, whether we do expand, expand, or whether we do filter contains, um, you know, from a human perspective, either is good for me. Um, you know, I'm not saying one is better than the other, but I just wanted to sort of get our feet wet, starting to look at OData version four features, because there's all sorts of wonderful things you can do. And I want to, it's 8.57, I can't believe, where, the, where is the time gone, right? Um, but I wanted to leave on um, uh, one thing that I saw on LinkedIn, Ralph Handel works for SAP, but is also uh, the chair of um, uh, the uh, Oasis Committee on OData. Last week, he said, oh, OData version 4.01 is now a candidate Oasis standard. And I sort of started digging into, well, what does that mean? And I don't know about you, but I've always been slightly sort of, you know, whoa, you know, head spin, head spun when I start looking at the actual OData documentation. So what I did, and I can share this as well, um, is I started to uh, uh, to sort of analyze all these documents and the relationships between the documents to sort of understand what was going on. I can share this a little bit more on the next episode or further. But basically, it's like I'm trying. I'm sort of finding, finally getting to understand how this all works. And with version four, there are multiple documents. Well, version. The, the OASIS standard for OData is in multiple parts. There's part one, which is the protocol, part two, which is URL conventions, part three is the uh, uh, the CSDN, uh, the, what's it called? Um, uh, CSDL, sorry, the Common Schema Definition Language, which is basically the language you use to write the metadata. So it's three main parts. There are other things as well, the Atom format, the JSON format, um, and so on. Uh, there's all sorts of documents, and, and these, some are normal, uh, normalized, uh, normative and some are non-normative. However, uh, if we have a look at, for example, this one here, OData v4 part one protocol, that links to, and this is the way that, it, you know, in the ITF and the W3C and this other standards committees, it's a beautiful way of doing it. 
um, you'll see that the latest document points to the latest actual physical document, which is the OS, as you can see here, the OS, the OASIS standard with some errata, errata version three, right? Originally, the OASIS standard for version four was published all the way, oops, all the way back in 2014. Okay, so OASIS 4 has been around, well, actually, since, you know, the CSPRD, the Committee Specification uh, Public Review Draft, version one, was was put out on, on the 26th of April, 2013. And you can see all this stuff here um, through these links. And you know, this, this latest stage here points to this one, and the previous one is this one, and so on. So you know, there's it's a lot of stuff to sort of get through. And I think once you start sort of staring at that and embracing that a little bit, there's all sorts of wonderful stuff to learn about, uh, which is where I learned about the expand, expand, expand type thing. Anyway, um, it's nine o'clock. I'm on holiday, actually. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, always so much to, sh uh, to share. And thank you so much for the, um, for the chat and the good ideas. Uh, I'll see you all next week. Have a great weekend. Um, and uh, thanks so much for joining as well. Uh, let's think about what we want to do with the Docker container, with the cap thing. Uh, and also uh, let me know in the comments and on Twitter as well, please, um, about, you know, what we should, where we should look next on OData because I think you know we now OData is at 4.01 you know we should start catching up with OData 4 which has been around for like six years already right uh, I know practically you know there's there's reasons why we also have to stick with OData version 2 with things uh, but anyway yes okay I'm going to stop talking and uh, stop going live in the stream thank you so much and uh, see you next week bye